Hello, buggies. It is me, Jester de Rama. But I will say you can probably call me Zack in this case, since this is meant to be a heart-to-heart -heart type of thing, and it was a little more energetic probably than I should have been in the last heart-to-heart uh, -heart video where I read your comments, but I was feeling energetic at the time and wanted to kind of show it. But uh, there's two main things that'll go hand-in-hand -hand with this video. And that is my employment and mental illness. Now, I had been uh, terminated from my last job, which was doing manufacturing of scope parts for rifles. And it was just like a general production job. Just load up the machine with the blank parts and then let it do its thing. And you get the machined parts, which are ready for the next step in the process for however they did their thing but i can't really say what they did all together since you know business practices and keeping things private and within the company you know but there was something that was affecting my ability to work and that had been my mental state in the area of mental illness. I mean, I can't really say what I have yet because I was waiting for like months to uh, hopefully get hired f on full time to the company I was working at because I was working as a contractor and being a contractor meant I had benefits that were less than ideal and were more out of pocket and I couldn't really afford much out of pocket. And unfortunately, my mental illness kept having me in such anxiety and depression that I had to call in sick multiple times to the workplace I was working at. And because of missing too many days, I had to get terminated. And I understand why, because I didn't want to waste their time and money because they need someone to be there working. And my mental illness is affecting my ability to function. I mean... You might say, just grit your teeth and go for it, and I did. It's just, even though I'm on medication, I could not do what it was really asked of me without feeling extreme disinterest, anxiety, and depression while I was working. I mean, I saw these other guys and girls just going at their job, doing it at a nice, steady pace, doing what they need to do. But for me, it was like... I had to force myself to do everything and that's still how it feels because this past week and a half I've been oversleeping even when I've had an alarm. I just I just feel like I need to get rid of anxiety and depression by sleeping. And I mean just yesterday I slept like 15 hours and I'm not the healthiest I could be. Whoops, bumped the mic. But to help that, I did make a couple of calls today, today being the 22nd, and I didn't get any answers other than hours I can go into an office to apply for the state coverage. And the state coverage, uh, Oregon Health Plan, was it's a lot better than what I would have been getting as a contractor, and that doesn't really make much sense to me because... I would be better off getting coverage and mental health or mental help through the state than I would working as a full-time contractor. And that's like, you would give me less because I'm working, but more, so to speak, if I was unemployed and under the poverty line. So for right now, I applied to unemployment, but I need to go into the office for unemployment uh, the following days as I go, and I'll go tomorrow, which will be the 23rd for me. And I will do what I can to see about getting unemployment and at the same time get mental help because this has become a repeat cycle. It's what I would call a mental health, a mental illness roller coaster. I was going to say mental health roller coaster, but same difference. It's just I can only do something so long. And try and get myself going for so long until, for whatever reason, my mind just starts freaking out in different ways that I can't really feel like I can accurately describe. It's like I get these 
bundles of emotions that just decide to make everything network right. Just jitter with anxiety, more or less. I mean, I wasn't jittering with anxiety, but it's just, I would feel so much going on in my head that I can't really function the way I want to. And that even goes for my content I was mentioning in the update video. Some stuff is just so, it should be so simple to me, but it stresses me out to an extreme where I can't do what I need to do. Initially, the medication I've been on right now, the medication I'm on right now, when I first started it, it was working great. I was actually feeling more functional, like I could actually do the things that I need to do. But as time went on, I lost my position because I got still stressed out by how I was doing and I wasn't at the point where I can consider myself mentally healthy to work. And I should be mentally healthy to work but I just keep going through the cycle of, okay, I get a job, uh, some mental health issue comes up, I get mental help, and I kind of crash. And then I lose my job. Now, I've lost a few jobs as I've gone on, but it seems like the only time I have been able to really function and stay functioning is if I've been working part-time. And I tried to make myself work full-time because I thought, you know, I can do this full-time. I should be able to do this full-time. I can get paid for doing what I need to do full-time. And getting paid full-time is a great thing because it's a stable income. That's great. But for whatever reason, I'm not sure if it's the type of work I'm doing, but I just get, I got stressed out and I couldn't really work the way I wanted to. It was a series of words that I can't even think of right now. I mean, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought. Really. Give me a second. I mean, it's just going through this cycle, this roller coaster, and it's just people should be, people are saying, get the help I need and I'm trying to work on it. But for right now, I think the only way I can actually stay functional is if I do something part-time that my mind can somehow handle. And during that time, I would be seeking out mental help. And that mental help would hopefully allow me to work full-time and wherever I will end up working full-time. But it seems like when I'm at home and doing other stuff, or what I would when I would be doing other stuff, I'd be doing okay. But I think for right now, the only thing I can really do is either ride unemployment while I'm getting mental help or get part-time work while I'm looking for mental help and hope that I meet the line for getting the state plan as compared to a part-time uh, employee's plan because part-timers, they don't really get very much because they work part-time and if you don't work full-time, you don't get the best benefits. So it's it's a mess when it comes to working with getting benefits for coverage, medical or otherwise. It's The medical system in the U.S. is a mess, if you pardon the rhyme. So I'm just here going like, what the hell do I do? And I don't want to make it seem like I'm begging, but I do need help as I go on. And I don't want to make it seem like it's a necessity to help me, but it has to be your choice whether or not you want to help me and it's your choice to help or not help in a supportive monetary fashion. So for right now, I'd be trying to get unemployment, which will be like a fraction of what I was getting paid when I was working at my last company, Warren Scope Mounts. Great company to work for and all the people there are really good and really nice. It's just my mental state, I can't handle things like I should be able to. So, again, that's why I'm trying to get the mental help I need. So I'm just thinking, you know what, screw it, I'll work, deliver for Uber, Uber Eats, I'll do streams, and do them for a longer period, so long as it gets me a little bit of income, maybe in addition to unemployment, but that'll be balanced as needed. So for right now, you know what, I want to add something, is that I am 
someone who can deliver for Uber Eats right now, but it's just this past week and a half, I've had just no will to do anything and been too anxiety ridden to even work. So it's like I just have to try and force myself to do stuff in order to make ends meet. And I know people are out there that are forcing themselves through mental illness or otherwise, excuse me, to make ends meet. And I just feel bad because I should be able to stick with what I'm saying I want to do. But then it turns out like a few months later, it's like, uh, I'm getting really uh, mentally unhealthy and it's that I try to go to these jobs so I can get better benefits in order to get mental health. But it's like, I don't want to waste the time that I need to get mental help in place of work time that is needed by these companies that hire me. I mean, I want to, don't want to say, Hey, I'll work for you, but I need like two weeks of mental help in order to actually get started. Not really many companies will be able to open the door right away. If you're not going to be working. Because you need to work to get the benefits to get the coverage. Well, benefits coverage is the same thing. You know what I mean. So, I'm just here, like, feeling guilty and ashamed that I can't get myself to do what I want to do. I mean, there's, like, hardly anything that interests me anymore. And I just remembered this, I guess, as a probably a good visual metaphor is to think uh i'm pretty much numb underwater and you know when you kind of touch someone underwater that you barely feel it that's kind of generally how i've been emotionally when it comes to even getting like some help and how things have felt in general is that i'm just essentially numb underwater looking through a window just seeing all these people with responses and ideas and everything, but I'm just here thinking, I don't feel any of that. I don't feel it because I'm just, I'm underwater and behind a window when I'm trying to take in all these suggestions and everything to get help and even any support from you guys and the community on YouTube, Tumblr, and in general from anyone I know and anyone who knows me, they give their input and support and I feel bad that I can't fully feel what I should feel. And that's something I, again, that might be a mix of getting therapy and psychiatry, um, in order to get myself balanced, but I need to get that done before I can actually do anything. And right now I feel that my medication, it's like, Here's here's where I want to be. Here's where the medication has me. And the medication, it gives me a baseline, but without it, I'm just... You know what? I actually was without my medication for four days, and having to stop cold turkey on mental health medication, that's not a very good thing to do. And it wasn't necessarily my fault... It was because while I was unemployed, well, not unemployed, while I was employed at Warren, over the uh, new year, the coverage I had for prescriptions was being changed. So while this was happening, and while faxes were being sent around between my doctor's office and a pharmacy, or multiple pharmacies, I had run out of medication. So it would be like I would wake up and I'd be having this weird mental dream trip where I felt like I needed to do something back in the dream and then would have to go back to sleep. And then I'd be in this belief that I really had to. So, you know, I have to kind of give a little bit of the nitty gritty details and say on day three or day four, I was so anxiety ridden. That I ended up, yeah, not not a pretty picture. And everything was just hypersensitive. Everything was just so intense. And I was just very much like, oh my fucking God, uh, I can't really focus on anything. Don't focus on anyone. Don't listen. And anything that would happen, it would be like almost like a blaring sensation to my senses. 
I mean, just a, even a kid just making a random noise on a table, like smacking a table, it'd be like, oh my god, what was that? And I'd be, I wouldn't physically react like that because I had to mentally focus myself to not try and focus on that kind of stuff and just focus on the moment, even though the moment was a mental mess. And I do want to add that I feel like I have different personalities that take on that I take on with traits that allow me to emote because emotionally I feel numb but I'm used to doing acting like voice acting that that feels like I can mimic what I need to do in order to present what I mean to present emotionally what I'm doing right now is focusing on my jester persona to try and explain things because otherwise, as Zach, you know me, I'm depressed, anxious, and whatever else is going on that I don't understand. And I don't want to be always like just characters that take place of emotions because I don't feel like I can feel much and that's kind of upsetting because... How am I supposed to know how I'm supposed to feel if I can't feel? And if I am feeling something, how do I know if it's what I'm meant to feel? And I know you guys are not a th series of therapists or psychiatrists, but I want you guys to know what all is going on so maybe you can get an idea of how I've been and maybe you might know a little bit about this and you can connect with me on this. So... All this is just what's been going on in my head. I'm just so done with being on a roller coaster that I just have to say, you know what, I have to make less money in order to get coverage, in order to get help, so that I can make more money. So right now, I am not getting any, not getting any unemployment until I'm approved for benefits, but that can take some time. So for right now, the only thing I can really do is deliver for Uber Eats, stream, and ask for any help that you are willing to provide. And I'm not going to be saying, hey, I'm begging for you, because that's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to share experiences. And I don't know, maybe... I never really feel like I had like a solid goal when it came to YouTube. I just wanted to do something that would be a way to connect and grow a community because I wanted to have some kind of, I don't know, online relationship where I can share and learn. I mean, that should be ultimately what I'm online for is sharing and learning. And I have been slowly learning over time about what I do and what works for me. And right now I unsure of what really works for me because I can only feel like I can edit things that I have little interest in. I mean, right now, these vlogs, I have, I said to say, little interest in doing it, but it's the only thing that I have like a spark of interest in showing because I feel like it means something to me and something I want to give to you so that we can communicate. And maybe find things out. But I will, of course, let you guys know once I get answers to my mental state. But that also takes time. And I will be visiting a therapist and psychiatrist as soon as I can in order to get the help I need. So I'm not just down here and I can be where I want to be and maybe have a balance. So for right now... I don't have the balance that I need. And again, I just feel like crap because I should be able to do stuff as an adult. I'm 28 almost, and I should be able to function as an adult. But it's just, it feels like mental health is a simple thing to me, and it should be a simple thing to work with in order to get stuff to get by. So just feeling like I can't do that I don't know, just, again, it makes me feel like crap because 
I can do like even customer service and I do other stuff part time, but it's like, I don't know what it is about full time work that I just, when I try to get help, I have it out of reach or it's not enough help soon enough. So I end up losing my job. So I guess my only route for right now is again, go for the state coverage for medical, get mental help. And if that mental help um, is the route I need to stick to, they offer vocational rehab so I can possibly look for work through the mental health office in order to find something that works with my diagnoses that have yet to be fully diagnosed. And I was previously diagnosed when I used to live in Illinois, but that was years ago between uh, the end of high school and in my college years until like... 2011 maybe 2010 because i didn't like the psychiatrist i had but i didn't take the time to look for a new psychiatrist and therapist so i was previously diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder clinical depression or massive de or major depressive disorder panic disorder social anxiety disorder and post-traumatic post-traumatic stress disorder and those were what I had, at least at the beginning, for when I was getting my diagnoses through the psychiatrist. But I didn't know at the time, when I was younger, that I need a therapist and a psychiatrist so I can know how to work with life and then know how to work with medication in tandem with each other. So that's what I'm trying to get. And I'll probably have something else diagnosed, but... When I did go to the hospital a few times, I was at least re-diagnosed with a well, major depressive disorder, which is clinical depression. And having clinical depression is like having everything gray. And then I can't really get myself back to color. So yeah, I did a little effect right there to give you an idea. And everyone says that when you're depressed, everything feels gray. And that's the thing is that it's just a gray. It's never more of an extreme that would be like even a positive extreme like happiness. I mean, I feel like I can get like short bursts, but then it's just gone. So it's depressing. So I think that's all I really have to say for right now. And if you know anything about this, I'm definitely open to hear what you have to say. But that should be about it for what I can really say for right now. I'm just, I need to work myself, need to work and get myself better before I can work on doing work. Because if I don't get myself better, I literally can't do work, even like this stuff. So managing to do this after like days of thinking about it and put, making up and building up the will, I don't want it to be like that because I used to be able to do almost everything not a problem like I felt like I was doing okay and I may not have been at my mental best because my mother at the time we weren't really meshing well and our mental states were not at their best so things led to how they did and now we're at an awkward arm's length so I'm really trying to figure out how to make an understanding that at the time of our leave from Illinois, I'm looking for a genuine apology for being hurt because I was in tears for days after that breakup of mother and child. And my mother made some offensive comments towards my boyfriend, calling him a thing and other transphobic comments, and was just lashing out after our argument about how much food should be provided uh, when cooked. Because Jack is a more diet-driven person. He just, at the time, went with making artichokes. And because, supposedly, my mother got the last choice and got a smaller one, she got angry about it. And then we got in an argument, and she would not calm down for the next day. And that next day was the, the four of us rushing to get all of our stuff into a moving truck so that we can be away and get out because she wanted to kick us out of the house 
because of the argument and we made and we had said what we did because we were also upset so i would say i'm sorry for offending offend, offending but i'm not sorry for leaving because it had been a long time coming and i had been trying to be supportive of my mother with whatever she was going through but i probably should have taken her advice um, when she was saying I shouldn't feel the need to take on her problems. But then I think there was just this line of trust that was broken once we got into that argument and everything, and it just went south. To add to what she had said to me is that she said I was not her son, a disappointment, a son of a bitch, a bastard, an asshole, pretty much anything to hurt me. And she knew more than anyone else that I was bullied from kindergarten into high school. And then with our argument, that just felt like she put all that out of the way just so she could express her hurt by hurting me. And that's how it felt. It felt like she was trying to hurt me because I hurt her. But we need to understand we both need help and it's more than what we could have done together so ultimately i feel that our separation is for the better so that we can come to a better understanding maybe at least through text rather than verbal arguments that were come becoming more common as we stayed together it because it just it I, over time, when I was getting older, I had a few arguments with my mother a couple of times in regards to past girlfriends I had, and she had locked me out of the house and was upset with me because I didn't do something that she agreed with. I think I got those negatives right. I was doing stuff that she didn't fully agree with, even though I was being safe and trying to be communicative. So what I'm looking for from her is a genuine apology for also being hurt and my roommates being hurt and being blamed for things that we were being honest about. We are as honest as we can be. We would not lie to hurt someone. We would say, hey, yeah, I did this thing, or no, I didn't do this thing, and that would be the truth. So, for whatever she believed, she believed that we were out to get her, and that, I think, could be a sign of her having mental illness that she would need to get help with. But, so, but I think that's about it, other than, yeah, that's about it for what I can really tell you for this heart to heart, but if you have any questions or responses, I will address them in the following video a little more uh, candidly than my energetic persona. So, I'm Zach, and thanks for watching this Just Some Heart to Heart, and I hope, I hope this is, I don't hope from this point, things can grow and get better. So other than that, you guys have a good morning, a good afternoon, a good evening, good night. I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Love you.